Yes, yeah, so I was born in a California prison, actually uh, Southern California, in a prison cell actually, because um, my mom was incarcerated for uh, the murder of my father. And that was, she got in there, I think it was her court, she had court and dealt with, it was 19, that happened in 1971. So she also went to, um, she went to Southern California and in the prison, um, she was supposedly, there's a lot of stuff that happened because she was new. So she was new in the prison. So supposedly, according to my grandfather, he, that's who raised me, my grandparents. So according to him is that she was shackled and um, not treated very good, like, teeth fell out. Um, she was, they gave her Thorazine prolixin when she was pregnant. I th I know for sure Thorazine, but they gave her a lot of psychiatric drugs. Um, so, and she didn't have any medical care. Like I said, her teeth fell out, everything. So she was also incarcerated with the Manson women. Uh, she said that, you know, she didn't really have a lot of interaction with them, but, um, yeah, but supposedly to when she went there, uh, my I mean, my grandfather tells a totally different story. He's kind of like an embez not embezzler, excuse me, embellisher of things. So I don't know how much is, I know a lot of it's true because I've looked at um, court records. Uh, I've looked at um, autopsy. I looked at his autopsy. I didn't see photos, of course, because they didn't have that. But um, yeah, and I got to see too is that she was, um, I guess the story is, from what I know, it's kind of kind of jumbled because I came after the fact. Um, I came after she was convicted. And my sister and my brother were there actually when the crime happened. So my sister remembers she was like, uh, gosh, three or four. My brother was like 16 months. And so I guess supposedly at that time there was a fight. They used to argue a lot. And um, at one point, I guess even at my aunt's house used to be my grandparents house but what happened was they would play with guns a lot because he was a Vietnam veteran I think he enlisted when he was 17 so and then he went to Vietnam and when he went to Vietnam that messed him up because he had to see a lot of stuff according to what I know I've been told by my bio biological mother so he was basically he would have to go, he saw a lot of his friends blown apart, and so they would use children, supposedly, as like shields. So he was really messed up, and back then they called it shell shock. So he had, like now it would be PTSD. But um, yeah, he and him and my mom, like my mom was basically from my grandparents. They were young when they had my mother. She was the first child, so. And, um, and I know for a fact that he sexually abused her he sexually abused her, um, and I think it created, I think besides having like some issues mentally, it was like denying what happened, I think. They're like, no, no, you're sick, you're sick. You know, because I, th I feel like that happens in a lot of families, is that they don't want to accept that um, as, you know, sexual abuse. It's a under, I think, uh, in America, it happens all the time. But so basically she was messed up and they're like, uh, she came out and tried to talk about it. She tried to talk about uh, what happened and she got, basically they put her, I mean, she had problems anyways, but they gave her medication. So I think time happened, she met my father. Uh, it was kind of like, I guess an imperfect, <laughs> I don't know, implosion of things, but um, yeah, she, she met him and when they were, uh, Together, they would play with guns, and but there's also like some conflict in the story in my family. Like some people think she's a victim, you know. Very, f you know, very few people think that he was the victim, um, you know, because a lot of times what happens in that situation is that uh, I think the victims, the true victims, get ignored. To me, and society does focus on like my mother or. Uh, whenever I've told the story, you know, I've gotten just varying, various reactions to that. So, but yeah, so I guess supposedly is that they were in the house, according to my sister was there and my mother's talked about it very little, but she's really, really, really mentally ill. So severely, like really mentally ill in prison, obviously didn't help.
you know, how she was treated in prison. And um, so it's, it's conflicting, you know, it's a conflicting thing to be a part of. You have one person that's a victim and you have one person that's a victimizer, but also a victim. So it's, you know, really confused, you know, conflicting, confusing thing. So, but they were supposedly, I guess, I don't know if it was an argument or what happened, but supposedly, you know, as I think an infield rifle, I think it's a, there's different, the different um, newspaper articles say different things. So I think it was a British infield. One said 303. I don't, I don't know very much about weapons. So, you know, but um, yeah, and he was, his stomach, based on what I looked at the autopsy records, his stomach, his spleen was blown apart. Um, my sister saw it was covered in blood, um, and that definitely traumatized her uh, a lot. Um, so he survived, I think, about a half hour, because my mother went to the police station. She went to the police station where she lived. It was about a half a block away, and they came there. So when they came there, uh, he was like, it's an accident, it's an accident, but he didn't realize, based on what I know, my grandmother who I call, who's, you know, I call mom, but she told me what happened is, is that at one point my mother uh, tried to get somebody to kill my father. So that's probably why she was originally charged with first degree murder and then made like pled, she had a public defender and then they got her a lawyer. So I think that helped the situation too. Plus, you know, my mother, my grandmother denied on the stand. She told me like when I was probably around 16, she said like she denied on the stand, she's like, it wasn't on the stand. It was like, uh, I guess some kind of jury, like some kind of, I don't know how they do it because she made a plea deal and I don't know how that works. But, um, yeah, so she told me privately because we, me and my grandmother had a very, very close relationship. Um, she told me that my mother, what happened to her is that, uh, she, like I said, she had that letter and my mother was like, I'm not going to have my daughter, you know, get possibly life in prison because I don't think they had the death penalty then. So, um, yeah, so what happened after that, too, is uh, my dad died at the hospital like a half hour later, and then they arrested my mother, um, and then she was locked up for a while and under psychiatric care, because I guess, you know, obviously she has a diagnosis of, of schizophrenia, but I don't think at that time it was as severe. But she was having, like, delusions and things like that. So she would be like, oh, this person sexually assaulted me you know, when she was genuinely a participant in it. And there's also questions about the paternity of me um, is because supposedly before my dad died, before there, um, is that there was a guy, I don't know who, you know, I was told by my sister, um, she was like, there's, and my mother's tried to tell me that too before, but you can't really, some of her, you know, nowadays it's not as, I don't think it's as factual versus then, so, um, yeah, but they, there's questions. There's questions about who was my father. And uh, I've heard that twice. My mother tried to tell me. And I haven't gotten a DNA test yet, but I have the same blood type as him. Um, so, yeah, so then she went to, she was in uh, the county jail. Or I don't know where they put her. But then after that, she went to, um, there's some court stuff going on, so they t she went to another medical facility, like a prison. Uh, I think that was, you know, in, close to close to Sacramento. But so she went there, and then they decided that she would go to a Southern California prison, which was the only prison at the time for women. So um, so they decided that that's where she could go, so she can get the psychiatric help she need she needed. So eventually she went there and um, she was pregnant with me. And I guess at times they're like, look, um, the people at the prison, I don't know who, but they're telling her, look, that's a tumor. You need to get rid of, get, that's a tumor. Get, you need to get rid of it. And my grandmother's like, oh, hell no. She's like, that's, that's no. She's like, you're not, no, that's, that's a baby. That's a baby in there. So she, my mother you know, kept me despite being pumped through a lot of drugs. Like I said, her teeth fell out. I got no medical care. There's times allegedly, I'm just saying allegedly that she was restrained. And um, that this is according to my dad, my grandfather, um, that they're like, Donna, you know, keep keep going, Donna, keep going, don't give up. You know, cause she was new and she was a pregnant woman in prison. So, and then what happened was, I guess eventually, like we used to go visit her too. 
And I didn't know this woman. I, I don't know. It's just like, oh, this is your mother. <laughs> because they got me at three days old. So they got me from the prison at three days old, and then they baptized me. I was the only one baptized. And that's because the obvious reason is my mother, you know, was a, at this point, even though involuntary manslaughter, she was a murderer. So they wanted to make sure that everything was good with me. I, everything that, you know, I had some sort of uh, spiritual protection or something. So, yeah, but so after, when she was in labor, though, she had a, I don't know if it was a girlfriend or somebody that she was close to, um, but I'm named after the, the nurse that eventually came and helped her deliver because she delivered me in a prison cell. So I don't know the whole situation, but there, you know, about that, because most people in there are probably dead. So, but yeah, so, uh, and then she was also had a girlfriend, because my middle name I'm named after, I don't know, my mom said is a bank robber or embezzler. So I'm named after her. And then what happened is, is so after she gave birth, they called my mom, my grandma, who I call mom, and they're like, okay, she gave birth. And so they went down to LA super fast, uh, as fast as they could. And they went and um, they had to wait. They had to wait for me. They're waiting because the impression that my mom, my grandmother got is that they wanted to adopt me out. So, um, but my grandmother waited there. She waited there for me and her, we were very, very close very, very close. Um, so she waited there and they got me. And then they also, I guess my mom said that I had like withdrawals. I don't know that I was jaundiced and not the best for, you know, a little baby. Um, cause I think sometimes people don't realize, and I get how it is hard depending upon the crime and who's done it is that there's, uh, there is victims on both sides and that's the family too. Cause society has not been kind to me during my early years. Um, I've had people come, people say, cause my mother used to hang out in the same area. Cause my mother was, uh, she was a prostitute at one point, had a pimp, um, because how was she going to like take care of herself basically for her, especially coming out of prison and being severely mentally ill. And this is in this, I think she was released in the seventies, the late seventies. So, but yeah, it wasn't easy for her, you know, to experience that in you know, I just remember constantly being around like, you know, we after she got out, we would go to like, see, I think one of the conditions of her parole was that she was, um, she had to go to like the state hospitals. So we used to go visit her and it was pretty, you know, for a kid being a small kid. One time I can remember lockdown and I just remember, I have this, this visual of there's a person you know, because we had to stay on the outside, but this is like, you know, a state hospital. So lots of lots of people in there for, for some pretty, <laughs> pretty bad things and not everybody. But so, yeah, I can just remember being like really young and like this person is peering through the window just with this like really crazed look on their face. And it really freaked me out, you know, because I'm a kid in that. So <clears throat> but after that, she was released. I think she, I don't know exactly everything like with that, but she was released to Sacramento. So she came to Sacramento with living like the, what are called SOR hotels, single room or single room occupancy. SRO. Yeah, our, SRO. Yeah, single room occup occupancy. And that was downtown, which back in the day, it's different. It was different. They had a lot of people. It was cheap to live down there. They had a lot of, um, you know, they had people that basically, you know, people that could be maybe they're on SSI or whatever, and they would live there. So, but um, but she, we used to live in a, in a town that was very, a smaller town that was close to that. And uh, we used to live with my aunt and my mom would call and call and call, like nonstop. She's like, those are my kids. I want my kids. You're not letting me talk to my kids. Like the phone would ring at 1.80 sometimes, hang up. She would call again. And one time, actually, her and my aunt got in a, a really pretty big fight. Uh, I, I don't want to get into that, but they got in a fight. Cops were called. School bus comes by, you know, because they also had to watch us at school because she tried to kidnap us twice. So she tried to kidnap us. I can remember it was her and her pimp. Um, I think she had two. Um, she's married a couple times. But I can remember my brother and my sister. I remember we're walking home, going to where we live. And she's got her, you know, cars open trying to get us in there. And we, we, we just like booked it. We took off because we're not about, you know, getting 
you know, who knows what would have happened for that. So, but she tried a couple times and I didn't really know her that well. It was kind of like a complete stranger that was terrifying. And then I would have things like people would say, oh, you're just like your mother. And they did that to my sister too. You're just like your mother. You're just like your mother. You know, and it's like, that's a really hard thing to go through as a kid. Um, a really horrible thing to go through as a kid because you have to really do, when you are related to somebody that, and you're in the womb, and they do something like that into your father, first off, you have some people in society, you know, they're going to judge you very deeply. And then you have some people who are going to be compassionate, but back then they didn't have as much, they didn't have as much knowledge on that. So nowadays people are kinder, you know, they're more understanding about it because there's more information. But um, I had to do a lot of self-examining myself and my sister too, because you know, to be like, to tell in your formative years that you're just like a murderer, somebody that did something that, you know, the old, it's not the ultimate thing to do. I don't mean that in a, definitely not, in a, <laughs> that's in a very traumatizing way. But um, yeah, to have people, I've had one guy was like, cause she used to hang out where I used to hang out. You know, Sacramento was different. It was different. Um, she would hang out with people that, you know, society, society at that time was like, uh, you know, not you're like they're not acceptable so i had one guy come up to me and he goes she killed one and she stabbed another and that situation was that she did actually stab somebody um she stabbed him because he was her pimp and abusive towards her in that instance and he was also a child molester and a rapist um that she married and i remember that guy too because my grand grandfather's piece of work, but he actually liked that guy. So we had to have that around. Um, we had that around us, him around us. And one time my brother, like, my, he, he liked, you know, young children. So my brother busted his, his teeth out, you know, because he was like, and he was also trying to say, look, I'm your father. And it's like, no, you're not. You're not my father, you know, so. But there's also stuff, too, related to my mother, like, uh, I know some people think she's like the total victim, but I have a lot of conflicting things about that because when I was younger, I found like uh, she had like a book. She had like a, f a photo book and it had like Black Widow on it. It was really, really weird. I mean, cause being like a kid and seeing that. Uh, so she had that and uh, like I said, she recently she's not, I, I haven't seen her because we have a very up and down relationship. I mean, it's really difficult to have a relationship. And before she's threatened to sue me um, because talking about what happened, she wanted to sue me. And we even like, so basically when my dad died, us kids, he had an insurance policy. And so she wanted him, she wanted the money, basically. She thought that money, she was like, Should, if that money's mine, whatever, they put it in an account. We didn't get it till 18, which I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> because 18, and to us, it was blood money. Because everybody's like, do this, do that. You know, people, because for that time, it was a large amount. It was like 20,000, maybe 20 or 30,000. I can't remember the exact, but it's basically blood money to us. We're like, you know, it's a lot of stuff attached to it. And um, then you also have other people in the family who I don't talk to. Uh, one is he was in corrections pretty high up, worked with, uh, was Reagan's assistant too, but he was very much like the bane of my existence growing up. He just thought he can like these traumatized children, I think maybe in his brain, I can't say what he thought. He's like, maybe I can, you know, get, th get them to do certain things. And, uh, and also, you know, he had a higher position of power and so I think that he thought that we weren't complying with him. And it was like, but we were very traumatized children. I mean, we came from that situation. Then we grew up with my abusive grandfather. And uh, he was really, really, really abusive and sexually abusive. And, you know, it's unfortunate that people really have a hard time accepting that when things like that happen. And I think in families, um, I feel like it's it gets covered up and... A, a lot, I feel like it gets covered up and the abuser keeps on, you know, abused many people, many children, you know. Um, he was also physically, physically abusive to my grandmother. So it's kind of like I have a lot of compassion for my mother, but also I have, I don't know this person that well. I've tried to have a relationship, but she was doing good for probably 
when I had my kid, she was doing actually the best I've ever seen her. We had somewhat, somewhat of a relationship, but uh, it's very difficult, you know, because there's one time, you know, she just cared about the money. You know, it was the money, money, money. And I'm like, I don't have a father, you know, uh, and I have to be around like, um, you know, abusive person. But, you know, on the flip side, I try to do uh, what I can. I'm, I'm going to school, um, almost finished with my degree in criminal justice for my AS. I'm applying for a university next, uh, let's see, I think after summer semester, because I'll be done. And my goal is to go either ideally in forensics, uh, we'll see how that happens, what happens with that, but victims' rights and reformative justice, because I've seen, you know, it's kind of like one of those things I feel like that a lot of people don't want to, people do want to touch it, but it's a very, I think it could be very controversial too, um, but I just want to be there for, you know, kids that, um, or adults or whoever, you know, adults that have gone through it because when I went through that, there was hardly anybody to talk to. I went into the forums for the crime victims. I got ripped apart at times. I had people very understanding, but at times I got ripped apart because I chose to forgive her the best that I could. So some people had a problem with that, but I, I get that's not for everybody because my every situation, every, I think, uh, survivor of crime, like of a certain things that happen, is they have their own take on it. You know, because I've even had where I, I was taking a criminal investigations class in this. They are talking about the death penalty. And, um, you know, at that time, I just, people are gonna have their views, you know, but for me, because it's my specific situation, so some woman's like, she's like, yeah, string him up, hang him, hang him. And I just raised my hand in that class. I was like, you know what? My mother was originally con convicted of first degree murder, okay? And there's other victims. I'm not saying that you should just be like, oh, you know, because certain circumstances, I get it, you know, but this is just my particular circumstances. But it really messed up my family and uh, society too at times, you know, because people think, oh, you know, I think they don't, maybe some people don't think about like there's children involved and that's why my goal is, like I said, uh, is to be there, you know, the best I can and share. I'm volunteering and I'm going to be actually going back to the prison that I was born at. So that will be in, I believe that's coming up in a couple months because uh, in, in another prison too, I'll be going there and supporting them and, you know, and it's going to be a trip because, you know, coming for full circle you know, come and kind of like, it's doing all this stuff. It's taken me a lot to this point because I was also a runaway. I didn't run away for very long, <laughs> like two weeks and then a couple of days twice. But I was like, you know, you see a different side of life. But, um, and there's also, you know, I don't want to go too into detail, but I did witness a double homicide recently. I don't want to go into too much details, but um, I never expected that. But it's made me think about deeper you know, deeper, um, you know, d just just deeper, just d deeper about society, I think, seeing that, like, because I never thought I would, you know, um, I never thought I would see that. It was, you know, they were shooting at each other, and it was, a, yeah, I don't want to say the date, because I don't, you know, I mean, yeah, I just don't want a lot attached to that, but it's, it's just. It's, it's interesting, though, that, you know, your, your childhood was so full of chaos. Mm-hmm. And that usually, I guess, I guess it'll it'll send a person, a child, into one path or another. And, yeah. and luckily, you you took this path. Why do you think that is that you didn't end up drug addicted? And well, I did actually. I was for six years. I'm six. I mean, six years clean off of opiates and uh, benzos. And um, but I I don't know. I guess maybe having somebody that believes in you. Um, there's like my grandmother is. We had like we were so close and she was like, you know, she's very, very, very supportive of me, uh, very supportive and she believed in me. I think that's one thing. Like there's this one person who I really um, have a lot of respect for. I don't, and he's a, he's an academic, but he came basically when he was 15, he was in a gang and he saw his friend shot. And then he had, there was a police officer, officer that was like, Hey, you know, he 
was talking to him. He's like, hey, look, I don't ever want to see you here again. And then he had a teacher that believed him, believed in him. So, you know, he went through all that and he has his PhD. And so I think, um, like I said, it just takes one person and that's why I'm very like uh, sensitive, sensitive to that, to children. And I think that's what probably kept me. And also I think, I don't know. I don't know, I guess I'm not gonna say luck because I think I had, I don't, I, I don't know. I just, I was like, I am not going down like that. You know, I am never gonna, I'm not going down. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna go down like that. I think it's just a really, 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 really deep seated, like I am going to survive. You know, I am going to make this. I don't care. Cause I've been in some pretty, pretty mentally, you know, places. And I just, somehow I was like, no, I had to put one foot in front of the other. I was like, I'm not, and you have to reach out. You know, I think also, I think these days, which helps is finding, you know, there's more, there's more stuff online too. And, and um, also to, you know, I think maybe also trying to find people that you can relate to. I have a really, really good set of friends. I've, you know, I think that's also now I have just a really great support system, therapy. I went through tons of therapy, IOP. Um, I have my spiritual beliefs too has kept me going. You know, I think that too has kept me going. And also because I want to make a, a difference. I, I you know, I, I can't, I can't go through all this and just, just, you know, I see like, for example, there's, you know, I, a particular person, I just, that I, I know that they're going through it, you know, um, and I have to be there for them, you know, and I have to be supportive, I have to be kind to them because it's not an easy existence going through that. Because, but luckily overall society, I think there's more education, but that's basically why I feel like that has helped me is I think I just have a really, I don't know. Just uh, I'm just like no. I'm not going down like that. You 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 guys are not going to destroy me. You know, regardless of what what it was. But I think it's also too because my dad, I think it was some of the stuff by my mom and my dad, you know. Um granted my dad, you know, he was very like I said, he was I would I would consider him all abusive. Um but I think they tried to ingrain like cuz they knew what we were going to go through is that they tried I think my dad's way of trying was <laughs> not like the best way, but um, yeah, I just think maybe possibly making a positive impact on somebody and saying like, look, you can, you can do this if I can do this. That's the thing, I'm getting my degree. I'm gonna get my, my you know, who knows? I may get my master's. I may be in school until who knows, but if I can impact literally like one or two people, I think that's what keeps me going. And it's children, especially go going through that environment. I just, like at my work, I, I worked really well with people that what they call nonverbal and people that had gone through, uh, you know, abusive situations. I just, for some reason, that's, I'm, I'm kind of made for that. You know, I'm kind of tough like that and I can handle it. And, you know, it, I understand. So I think that's a big part of it. And, you know, I just, yeah. And it's also my dad's memory. Um, because he suffered in life, you know, he was actually, you know, there's some, he was actually, um, he was adopted. So then what happened, his parents, his adopted parents died in a car, in a car crash and he lived, he lived with only a broken bone. And, um, I know he had a brother, his brother had a lot of guilt about it cause they were both adopted. But, you know, the, also the thing too is amazing is my sister found, found his adopted family, you know, through DNA. So we're in contact and um, yeah, it's like, you know, there, we have a lot in common, um, love of animals, love animals. And um, they just, they're very strong. There's very strong people understanding. They give us, they've given us, I think, which has been therapeutic is they've given us the empathy, empathy that we needed that our family, um, well, for me, for me, um, I feel like, our family didn't give us that. And I feel like that, you know, with my uncle, he, he's apologized, we don't talk, but I, I think that, because when my grandmother is dying, um, you know, I talked to him about that. He's like, I wish I would have done it differently. But if you feel that way, 
and you know that these children and you know not I mean there, he has reasons for other things but I'm talking about specifically me and my sister um there's just a lot of like we don't even exist you know it's like you know you want to go talk about gun violence you know cuz you're a teacher or whatever but you don't even acknowledge your own family your uncle that's your that was your uncle you know and yeah so uh yeah but he experienced a lot so basically my point is is that it's in his memory I have a tattoo has his name and my my kid's name it has the initial because he he lost so much i mean think about it he was adopted didn't know his family went to vietnam you know married my mother was in that in our family which is pretty chaotic and then he uh yeah and then he lost his family he lost his life you know and that's why i think what really you know helps me and i have a really good relationship with my kid too uh we we're really close and i'm so that's also actually you know what they are the ones when i i wasn't they said i wasn't going to ever be able to have a kid and then i ended up pregnant and i was using like birth control too and so i remember when i got pregnant and that you know that also helped me too because i was like i am going to try my best to give the best life that i can granted it was fraught you know cuz you can't go through that and have situations that's one of the best things about my ex is no even though we're not together is like we made this beautiful human being that i'm like very honestly proud of and i'm not saying it cuz just because my kid they're a very good human being so i you know i'm trying to break that i feel like in some levels i've broken the cycle with them cuz they have a healthy relationship with their partner and they have a job and they're very smart very intelligent person very compassionate but also they have a backbone too they're kind of like me <laughs> you know they've got like a backbone and but they also have a a strong you know they have a strong foundation so i think that's definitely it because my mom she was like nope you're keeping you're keeping that child you know excellent yeah all right tonette thank you so much for sharing yeah. your story you're welcome thank you you broke the cycle yeah thank you <laughs>